The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. not getting the homoerotic undertones in the open. I'm just I'm just not seeing it. Are you? I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the hard on I'm, I've got right now. <laughs> <laughs> you did pull me into the car by my shirt, right? And yeah. All right, click this. <clears throat> the Kevin Nash Podcast. He's Kevin, I'm Sean. And uh, we're here with you, like we are every Monday, if you listen on Monday, or watch on Monday. Um, Kev, another, uh, you, you flew the friendly skies once again. Yes. This past weekend for uh, yet another appearance. You've not had good flight luck. I, you know, I I vented on, on on Twitter over it, but see, I, what people don't understand is when, if I take the time to vent on something is, I mean, let's get some a couple of things straight. Um, you're not wealthy if you fly first class on a commercial flight, especially when somebody is buying your ticket. Okay, you're privileged to sit in first class, and after 30 years and 37 surgeries, I think I've earned the right to sit in first class. And because people are bringing me someplace and they're making money off of me, obviously I'm worth the purchase of the first class seat or they would not pay for it. What I'm trying to make a point of is the slow decline of everything in our world, especially in America. Since the pandemic, I don't know, and it's, I don't know what they're paying people now. I know that it's, you know, a lot of people just can't fill positions. So I don't know if, if people that used to be in these positions who were, uh, very conscientious, uh, understood that, you know, the old, you know, the, uh, the consumer is always right. Um, but it's, what, what it is, is the, the flight before that, it was the fact that we were a hundred yards from the actual terminal the this plane, was two weeks ago. You talked yes, about the the, 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 yeah. the the plane was the plane was buckled up, and she's telling a gentleman to sit down because she's got to get the paperwork. <laughs> there's no fucking paperwork. Once once you leave the gate, there's no. It's the it's the lies. It's this. Okay, this is. I, I was talking to a guy on the plane, and he was watching Fox. I was watching CNN. And he says, I don't see how you could watch that. And I said, well, I said, if your wife that you were married to for 30 years came to you and said, you know, I just wanted to tell you, for the last 30 years, I've been lying to you. And not only have I been lying to you, but... What I really feel is 180% from what I'm telling you. So every time I tell you I love you, I'm actually telling you I hate you. She's tuckering you. Exactly. And then, of course, most people would go, oh, well, fuck, that's not a problem, baby. (laughs) We'll just keep this thing rolling. (laughs) But what they don't understand is they continue to watch Tucker Carlson. 
So at this point, Tucker Carlson is saying he's pro-Trump with the MAGA, with all this, and he's, he's 180 degrees. He doesn't like the man, doesn't like what he stands for, can't wait till this is over. So what does that make him? He's definitely not a Republican. He's not for the GOP views. So he's a Democrat, more so than I am. So what did the guy say? He just looked at me. I guess it's like he he just looked at me like I pulled I like I I was tucking my cock in my pants after I was pulling it out of his mouth. Like Well, I guess I never thought of it that way. Never no, thought of it that way. The problem is you don't you see you at this point, you can't use the word thought because you don't have any. You don't have a thought. You're being Blind told. Forward, yeah. yeah, you're being told. It's just like this. You just can't see the motherfuckers moving you around. This, I, I, I just. So let me get, let me, let me just, let me bring you to Delta for a minute here. All right. So two weeks ago, we went through that on the air already. And a couple weeks ago, way out. You, you, yeah, whatever it was, three, two weeks. I, ago. I bailed. But you did. You did tell them that you were considering yourself a hostage. Yeah, <laughs> being held hostage on I mean, the tarmac. I, 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 well, I was at that point. I fucking. I, I was a hostage. And they let you off the plane. They let um, I, along with about. It ended up being the entire plane. Right. Because you know. Well, but you got the ball rolling. Yeah, <laughs> so, but but okay. people people don't realize that. If it's weather related, they don't have any compensation to the to the, the the customer. If it's mechanical, they have to put you up, feed you, give you the. I mean, so what they do is they fucking lie. They're telling me that it's a weather situation. I pull out my my phone, go to go to the my radar app. There's not a fucking thunderstorm. East of the Mississippi. I don't know what kind of weather they've got going on, but there's no. It's so. This this week, I get into a, a, uh, Atlanta. First off, as I as I leave on Thursday, we are we're I, I fly in from Daytona Beach into Atlanta. I've got God like a three and a half hour layover. And I get on a flight, and we're taxing to not. We're not taxing. We are on the actual approach to where we're going to take off, and we get the soccer mom slam on the brakes, where everybody goes forward. And because I'm so tall, and the all you have is a waist belt, I actually have to get my hands out in front of me yeah. to, to to put my hands on each side of the the, the screen. So you're still on the ground, and you're moving into position, and he jams the brakes. He jams the brakes, and at that point, everybody looks out their side windows yeah. and sees a lovely Southwest airline plane crossing in front of us. Cutting you off. But it, this one doesn't make the news, because at this point, it's now SOP. Mm. Now that we have the, <laughs> the acting FAA director which I now realize that means substitute teacher. He's handing out fucking, he's handing out the copy paper and telling you guys, go ahead and scribble and just don't fucking cause any trouble. Stay quiet. Like, yeah, this fucking guy is like, what a douchebag, right? Like nothing's been, nothing's been solved. It's the simple things as this. You can, you, you, we now have apps on our, uh, our phones where you can say uh, to an AI, write me a cease and assist letter to the trademark Kevin Nash, and in 15 seconds, it's better than any paralegal could write. Yeah, chat okay? GPT. Yeah, so, so we, have, we have this ability. Sure. Yet we don't have the ability for a human being 
at a fucking jetway to punch in that it's a Airbus 320 and then they just punch it in so when it when the when the front tires go into the the this trough and it locks in and you know what it is all they have to do is punch in Airbus 320 and this motherfucker doesn't have to joy can, joystick this motherfucker for 4 weeks to get the it's just that the jetway just would automatically know what the plane was. It would go. Why don't we have that? Well, I don't know. Maybe you should invent it. You know any billionaires that own any companies? If I did, I wouldn't be flying commercial. Well, maybe you'll, you'll be on a private jet soon. Hey. And that was your point before when you said... Exactly. This- people, that are, people that are rich fly private planes. Right. And they take their dogs and that whole fucking deal. But this wasn't even the worst part of the trip. I, 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 you, you didn't get your bags. It was a oh, whole to do. And the people, my crew from Delta that I've been flying out of that, that airport in Daytona Beach for 26 years, they are, every one of them are so conscientious and so great. And when they get a new person that comes in there, the people are so great that teach them. It, it's, it's like this oasis. And then you go to Atlanta, and it's like everybody from Delta is on work release. Like you can either pick up trash or you can lie to the fucking customers. So we're sitting at the gate, and the lady comes out, and she's really got an attitude. And she just informs us that I promise you that you will get to Atlanta sometime this evening on this plane. In other words, motherfuckers, we need this thing to turn around at 6.05 a.m. out of Daytona Beach. So no matter how much of a fucking inconvenience it is to you, it will fucking get there. So in the meantime... We sit at the gate for three hours in Atlanta. The, re- the first reason, the, the, the reason being, they don't have enough people to load the bags. But they have... Where are they? <laughs> well, they have a, the guy that came and drove the little truck with the, that, the, the ba- yeah. that the bags are in... He didn't have a problem fucking stopping and chucking those motherfuckers in the rain and underneath the fucking uh, plane. Everybody's bag was sopping fucking wet. The, I should say the 16 bags that made it. So you go through this whole thing. Now it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you have the 87 people in baggage claim line to fucking get your your baggage claim situation taken care of, which my people knew that I was, she just, I got off the plane. I looked over, I saw her. She just gave me the eyes. I walked over to her. She goes, I've already taken care of yours. Your bag didn't make it. I said, how does my bag not make it? I said, I've been sitting. I said, I said, I sat in Atlanta for three hours before I boarded my flight and then another three hours after, I said, I've, I was in the Atlanta airport for six and a half hours. And you're going to tell me that a fucking t- a, a carry-on to me bag didn't make it? She's like, yeah, it didn't make it. And I'm like, well, don't have some motherfucker knocking at my door at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning because I'll shoot him in the face. I said, so bring that bitch about 2.30. This, this was the flight home then you're talking this is, about? This, is, this, is my, this is my... This, is, this was my... Uh, Sunday turn into Monday, and then I'm going back to you know WrestleMania on on, on Thursday at three o'clock. So when did you get to your house? I got to my house around three three twenty three twenty five I think. A.M. A.M. Monday. Yeah. When were you scheduled to land? Like 10 or something? No, 11, 27. Uh. 
Oh, boy. <clears throat> so you let Delta have it on Twitter. I saw that. Yeah, now, did you get in touch with anybody? Like, is there a, a oh. number you can call? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, there's... <laughs> Yeah, good luck. You, you log. I, I logged in my frequent flyer number. That I've had. I've had for thirty fucking years. These people does not match. You could. You could not computerly fucking get through anywhere to tell somebody to suck your dick. Right. They've. They've designed that. Yes. Like that and, maze. And, 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 and at that point, all they're doing is is making you crazy. And then you just say to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna watch concessions, I, I, and I'm gonna watch concessions. That's it. and then I watched that, and it was the first half hour I had to watch over because my mom, I, I had to like get in the game and absorb it. So it was like it was like Sorkin was telling me in a in an ear earpiece what was going on. I was like, what, what? Oh, Succession. Succe- I'm sorry, Succession. You said Concession. I thought I'm sorry. this is a new show about no, serving hot dogs. I'm sorry, Succession. Don't spoil, I have it on DVR. I, I mean, any, anybody that, that came out of the shoot and followed that immediately from, last, from the last series that didn't watch, like, a couple of, like, definitely watch a prep, but I remember I was going to say, the, do they have those little uh, the, preview uh, it's, recaps, the recaps? But they had the whole, like... Uh, um, you could go back on uh, HBO Max and you could you could watch the whole third third series if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I watched it. But it was a long time ago. Yeah, it's I, I, no, but it, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't. Um, it it is funny though that I was watching uh, Ari, whatever his name is, on MSNBC before I came down here. They were talking about the, this Fox case, and they actually showed a clip. For when they're, they're going after Brian Cox, and they said he's like, they're they're gonna want they're gonna want they're gonna want to you know have you testify. Hey, I'm not gonna testify, <laughs> you know. Oh, he's not doing that, and that's basically what not, now Rupert Murdoch they want him to testify in the Dominion case, and his lawyer said that basically he's just too feeble mm. to, to make it. Yet he's getting married to like a 26-year-old, going to Bora Bora. He's got like 13 flights in in eight days. But he, God forbid, if he had to get in front of somebody under oath and, and, hey, 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 old dude, fucking like, you're writing a check. If I was you, I'd write it for a bill instead of a bill six. (laughs) He won't be flying commercial, by the way. Yeah. No. It's, it's fairly certain. I think on a boycott, this is the first year I did they didn't bring me into voice an episode, so maybe I'll be boycotting uh, season four here, the final season. You can let me know what happens. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your fiasco. I hope this weekend goes uh, a lot okay. more smoothly out to uh, California. Well, the only thing the only thing you could probably top it would just fucking just a little Patsy Klein. Sorry? I'm sorry. Was that Patsy Klein? No, Klein? that's Patsy Klein fucking just crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! I'm, I'm going for the song. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't know the song. Crazy, crazy. That's what it was. Crazy for getting on fucking Delta again. I'm crazy, but the my only the option out of fucking Daytona Beach is American. Now, why don't why don't you fly out of Orlando so you can go direct? Can you go direct in first no. class out of Orlando? Oh, you can't. Some places, but everything's everything. It's like people say, well, well, how about Orlando? Like, so you want me to drive 90 miles south of my house, get on a plane to fly to Atlanta? That would be me. That the impression was, well, how about Orlando? That's uh, exactly. I did the Ericsson's. How about Orlando? I'm I just that, saying I that. I do that all the time. People would be like, how about Orlando? I'll be like, how about Miami? Why Miami? I don't live there either. Because the math I was doing, call me crazy, was, yes, a 90-minute ride out of your way to save a six-hour inconvenience on the tarmac in Atlanta. But is it? You're still going into Atlanta under the same weather circumstances. Well, that's what I was asking. Do you still have to hit a layover if you go? I thought it would be Orlando to Lafayette or wherever the fuck you're going. My wife's flying overseas. Orlando has nothing. Okay. 
<laughs> She's got to go down to Miami to fly to uh, Venice. She um, going to Italy? Yeah. She, she's going she's to spend th- uh, a couple days in Venice. Then she goes on like a 14-day uh, Mediterranean t- uh, cruise. And then she's going to go to Athens for a couple days on the back end. Oh, it's tremendous. Yeah. Cause it's does, all she need, pl- does she need company? Me, me and my wife are great company. No, <laughs> she's great got, entertainment. She had a, uh, a friend of hers that had uh, her 50th, and it was right before the uh, the pandemic. And, um, got slash, delayed, I guess. <laughs> the <laughs> pandemic slash work. And, um, the work, you <laughs> dick. <laughs> the, the pandemic slash uh, way, way for Gates to make a shitload of money. Um, but, uh, and then her friend, uh, also, uh, beat breast cancer during all this shit. Good for so, her. So now it's, it, it's this epic. And the thing is, you know, I love when people to say this to me, you know, hey, I'm sorry your, your son died, but you know, you know, maybe it's time for you to get out there and, uh, you know, do some traveling. I said, yeah, let me. Walk the streets of Florence one more time to see David's one-inch fucking cock, so I can walk on the on the cobblestones of Florence and get plantar's fascia. Let let me do that because I I haven't done that enough. I haven't. It's like when I lived in in uh, Phoenix. Is there any chance we could go to the fucking uh, Grand Canyon? Fuck yes, rent a car and drive, motherfuckers. I've seen that. Just make whole... sure you fly out of Orlando Kevin, <laughs> when you go to Venice. Yeah, because you know. You're fucking, you're rich. I don't understand why you don't fucking fly in a jet helicopter. That way you can land right on top of the convention center. Well, feedback from last week. The Mick Machine says, ha, 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 drummer slash bassist here. You popped me with the damn putting the electric drum kit together for tea for Christmas. L-M-A-O. Absolutely. It's the seventh layer of hell. And Ooh. might I say, sir, T was a lucky fella to have you for a dad. Being supportive of your kid's musical ability or interests is not always an easy thing for folks. Mine were not. It's a good look, sir. Props. Thanks, so, man. Yeah, you got that kit put together, though, damn it, didn't you? Oh, it's at 4 a.m. Is, now, is that one of the gimmicks you could put the headphones on so you don't have to hear? Yeah, uh, you can put the headphones on, but it also came with a, with a, a, a nice speaker. You know? So, I mean, so what he, 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 yeah, so him and his buddy would, you know, his buddy would come with his electric and I had a guy with that thing called like a Source 7, Source 8. They had like a nice little small amp where they could jam up in, in, in his room. And, uh, you know, and it was funny because as time went on and he became, you know, got, got involved with different uh, bands, you just can't find drummers. Nobody wants, really? to, play the, nobody wants to play the drums. Huh. Ask Grohl. Just I want to be the front man. Back there. Yeah. Uh, Devo 49. I like the new starting format. Kevin really gets going when there's a crowd. I can only imagine how he was with the boys. Cracked me up. Also, the guy with the backwards snap back hat laughs at everything Kev says. You always need a guy like that in every group. Was that Dom last week? Who was wearing a backwards cap? I'm f- feeling like maybe yeah, because Dom. Dom, yeah, 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 because Dom said he went, he he did three hits a Molly before the show. So <laughs> Dom's the group drummer, by the way. He's our drummer. <laughs> uh, punk meathead. Dom's Dom's my buddy. So f- fuck off, everybody that didn't like. Why you know what? Every- uh, the people that were like, hey, who, oh, God, I can watch it, but I don't want to watch the Jabronis. Listen, you know that's what? the that's my impression asking you to go to Orlando. <laughs> Don't just give that to everybody. Okay, well I ch- I'm changing up then. I'll, I'll go with I'll go with a yeah, woman. Do, do, I'll, do something. I'll, like, okay, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do I'll do a woman. All right. And I don't mind watching your show, but I don't understand why you're gonna <laughs> have the Jim Brownies on. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Go buy it. Go buy yourself another fake Chanel bag. Turn that son of a bitch sideways, shine it up, and shove it up your ass. Boom. So last week we were doing the pre-show for the live audience, and we were 
rolling and and kev said like this is the show he just go <coughs> to the open and just keep it going so for people who were confused that we left the crew on so that they were all part of the opening and i think i did get comments that people liked it like devo 49 right i liked it and you know, punk I, meathead says uh i mean howard stern brought his crew on the air steve has baba booey potential steve let's see those teeth see all right, so we gotta have, we gotta find it in a nickname for Steve. Um, Trill Mexican three hundred five. I can assure you that Kayfabe Sean did not pay me to say that I do love the Florida Man Jersey guy segments you do on the podcast, Kevin Nash. I saw a great one today uh, on Twitter that somebody sent me. It was a guy in Florida. He stole thirty three thousand dollars worth of coins. Did they were rare it? old coins, and when he put it in a coin <laughs> machine, he gave him $29. <laughs> see, you didn't even have to say, I mean, a guy in Jersey doesn't do that. That is great. Maybe next year's tournament, he's, he's, a, uh, he's a very high seed for the, uh, for the March Sadness. Yeah, he was, he, he, was, he was playing in a McDonald's uh, high school All-American game last night. <laughs> Chico, Breck got accused of hitting it when Davy Boy was tearing it up the whole time. Of course, they're referring to our discussion of Sonny, Tammy. I've never heard in my entire career Davy Boy having anything to do with Sonny. It was on our show. It was on a kayfabe show. Was she, it? Uh, it? She got a little heat from, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, I guess so, it was. Davy uh, Boy's wife? Davy Boy's wife uh, for it. But uh, she she had never talked about it, and we were taught we were going through the list of people. God, and, if I'd have known that, because Davy Boy's wife was such a sweetheart. Yeah, I, I would have shit in her food. Everyone, again, <laughs> um, yeah, everybody uh, was kind of shocked by it, and you know, she said, "I I really never told him when everyone was giving me shit about Brett." She goes, "But I, I wasn't with Brett." She said, "I was with Davy." So we were like, "What?" and uh, can I can I give you this is my uh, of course uh, anybody that watched Christian television on Sundays back in the uh, early sixties would go G Davy. Oh, Do you know who that is? Davy and Goliath. Yeah, yes, the stop animation. <laughs> yes. They uh, it was very well veiled. Like I, I didn't know I was watching religious programming. I was a kid. I just thought this was a cool cartoon, but. It was I thought you were going to bring up one of the preachers. Did your parents ever have that on the TV in the home, the, the Sunday no, we morning had, we, we televangelists? Went to, we went to church every Sunday. Now, you're fucking wingtips, man. Those some bitches better be on the stoop with a fucking shine on Saturday night. Fucking Bob would fucking lay the hammer down. I have a, I have a Bob uh, question later on, actually. Yeah. Um, fucking wingtips. Rob D. says, uh, the Click This Podcast is the only place where Princeton and meth are compared. I guess referring to our tournament. Uh, <laughs> the Gator fan shots hurt, but we have some characters in our fan base, especially on this app. I think that was from Twitter. But uh, yes, Rob, the, um, I guess we did call the meth man Princeton <laughs> as he was shooting... Up the uh, ranks in our uh, in our tournament. Jeremiah Schuyler, Kevin, you warrant your warranted sarcasm of my hometown made me laugh out loud. Quote, whatever the disco in Utica was that night, always appreciated you guys working the Utica odd for us. Thanks for the great memories. By the way, were we a B or a C town? Utica. Well, I, you know what? The people were always good there. Um, that was always the, it was like the Utica, Rochester, Albany, uh, that was, but unless it was, it's hard to tell you because if it's wintertime, man, I know they had a great gym in Utica. I do remember that because that was a highlight because we'd always stay in Utica because they had a great gym uh, that we used to train at. But, um... But so we, so we don't know if they got the uh, 
The B okay. or the C, the Intercontinental would, title no, match or the tag team title match? No, there would have been a B because just on okay. the, the gym alone. <clears throat> because that that's anytime you could get, you know, a gym that you could train anything, you know. Mm. Good leg gym, good back gym, good chest gym, good arm gym. Every gym's a good arm gym. You can train arms anywhere. You can train arms in a fucking Marriott. Could trade arms anywhere, or Tra- train, train arms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing my Ox Baker did it shirt. More of the click this merch if anyone uh, is wondering. It's uh, have my Ox Baker did it shirt on. Very soft. This is, of course, the... Uh, soft option. I'm rubbing my breast, excuse me, <laughs> on the air. Um, I got some blood work back uh, today, which is pretty exciting. I got mine back a couple days ago. Did you? How, how, how are your triglycerides, let me ask you? Oh, God. People hate when I, I've already got one guy telling me, like, I'm kind of so, so tired of Nash fucking reading his fucking blood work. What, a listener said this? Yeah. When else did you read your blood work? Was I absent that day? I don't know. Okay. So apparently, normal triglycerides. Any for anyone who doesn't know, like I didn't know before. Okay, my, here's here's my. Um, go ahead. Oh, that's my endocrine system. Triglycerides uh, are. It was described to me by my doctor. It said all the good stuff: pasta, bread, potatoes. Triglycerides are fat in your blood. Right. I so guess caused by carbs. They should be. It should be less than one fifty. Correct. Minus 76. You're incredible. Good for you. My total... You, cl- you win this contest. You want to know mine? Yeah. Take a guess. Uh, Take three, a guess. A, a one-third Italian guy living in New Jersey. What well, my triglycerides. Three, 305. 378. Okay. My um, total cholesterol was 91... My HDL was 44. My LDL, which is my bad cholesterol, was 32. Well, those all sound like good numbers. My numbers were good except for the triglycerides, so you you should probably start shopping for another co-host. So here's one for you. So I stopped drinking, okay? Mm. Again, cold turkey. Don't, I, I probably killed my son. Almost killed me. I found out that my C-reactive protein went through the roof because you just can't stop doing anything like that. You just you can't drink for sixty fucking years and just go okay, up right. go up lame. So all of a sudden, you're all, you, d- different things fucking happen, and your 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 liver is where your your um, C-reactive protein comes from, and it, my 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 enzymes were all fucked up because I was shitting pumpkin. That I, I, I told you my, my pumpkin looked like or my my feces looked like the, the the shit you put in pumpkin pie. So after like three three or four weeks of that, I said I looked at my wife. I said, you know what? I'm so fucking tired. I'm doing everything right. I, I'm I'm scaring the shit out of myself. So I, I drank a couple a couple glasses of red wine. Woke up the next morning to a, a, a dark stool, and I was just like, "Oh, okay." And then so then I, I read some worst thing you can do on as soon as you go down the rabbit hole that of WebMD, you're so oh, fucked. forget it. You you're don't. fucked. Do not do that to yourself. So I did that, you know, and it just like it starts off by saying. Uh, you know, it's it's a couple of you know, it's really nothing. Then it's you know, then it goes from that to you know, you you, you know, could could be you know, colon cancer. Or you also could be uh, unaware of the fact that you took the took the kill shot at the grassy knoll. It's like every fucking thing possible, you know, in this WebMD. So I looked it up, and I'm just like, okay, so what can like what can I do homopathically? And it's like NAC. And what, what, what NAC does is NAC makes your body produce glutathione. And so it's like I just basically went and I, I went to a, a holistic place and got uh, a bunch of things. And then I got uh, a, a product called, oh, God. It's a protein, but it's got... It's got uh, 20 grams of, uh, oh, 
God, what it, it's uh, there's there's soluble there's like soluble fiber and then there's the other fiber. Non soluble fiber. No, it's 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 um shit. Now knack go back. I never heard of it. Knack. Knack. It's NAC. it's a it's a it stands for something. I tried it once, but I, I didn't. Really, nothing happened. But I was I realized I was listening to the knack, my Sharona. But it wasn't the band. No, they, no. They wanted me to use a supplement. No, then. you I, beat I me to that. that. I was I was going hard to try to get my Sharona. Um, no, na- so so now I'll go to my uh, longevity doctor, and I'll get, when I get back on Tuesday, I'll get a glutathione push. And I'll do uh, three, three, one a week for three weeks, and because my my C-reactive protein went from 0.2 to like 5.1. So this is all. Let's go back. This is all from going cold turkey. Cold turkey. No wine anymore. Yes. Wow. And basically, so then what's the answer? Stepping, up. stepping down. Stepping down. Okay, stepping down, and then it said as you 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 went into it, some people's um, inflammation uh, markers were, are actually better if they have a glass of wine, and that's where the old thing was. Ah, it's better to, have, and it's like, and every doctor says no, it's better just not to drink at all, which that's great if you you know somebody that that um, has never drank. You know, if I had never had uh, a drink in my life, then absolutely. But I've been drinking since I was in seventh grade, so it's like. Right. Well, but they do say that, that wine is a, is a bit of a different, uh, all the alcohols have different different effects on you. I mean, the, wine, 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 is, wine until you uncork it is actually a living organism. Right. Because of the yeast, right? The, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the, I, there was some body cam footage. There was another uh, mass murder in a school in Nashville. Um, it was a Christian academy, I think it was called. Um, and uh, they released the body cam footage of the responders, uh, the first responders, the uh, tactical unit that went inside. And man, after watching the, the, the sitting through the frustration, we talked about it on air of the Uvalde nonsense. Um, the amount of time, hour and a half or whatever it was, but, uh, to see these guys. Was that officer's name Brown? What was? It? Can, can you guys find out what the, what the the officer that basically it, you go from him opening his trunk the one and with you, the ki- who had the kill shot? Yeah, yeah. I I would have sworn that that was a first shooter game. It was so effective. Man, they deployed just, and they covered that building. They were through every fucking. They they knew the layout clearly, um, which you actually mentioned when we were covering the Uvalde thing. When they didn't, they, there was that which way do we go? Uh, moments looking through the the how to get in the building, and uh, this was the exact opposite of that. Man, they they flooded that. They were all through the hallways, Rex, and then Rex Rex Engelbert and Michael Calrazzo, Calrazzo, something like that was the yeah the, Calazzo, yeah. So just a minute for props to that to that department and their senior staff and, uh, and the guys that fucking they, I mean the guys that ran headlong into danger and to not, save those not only that but it is they're clearing and they come up that one hallway and then you start to hear gunfire mm-hmm. and there was no pause. There's no fucking pause in anybody. It's like they're they're aggressively making their way up. They, they they don't hit the ground and start low crawling. They are going to to, to put this fire out. Yeah. And um, you know, as as fucked up as as everything else is, and this person took six lives. This person w- had mental problems, and let's not fucking forget that she was able, she was able to purchase seven firearms legally through our fucking poorest system. Terrific. Yeah. It's horrific. And my whole thing is, 
I've, I've, I'm, I've always been a very uh, staunch Second Amendment person. Um, I own assault rifles. I have, se- I mean, I have weapons. Um, but you shouldn't if you're a kook. But you, as I said, you have to have better, that, that girl should not, and then her parents who were definitely dealing with, with her were under the impression that she only had one weapon. Well, fuck, if you're crazy as fucking bat shit, you don't need any. Your and then driver's we get, license and then we is go, treated yeah, with, we get, with more <laughs> consideration than your license to carry a gun. Well, you know, we live in a society right now where we're so fucking worried that a drag queen is going to somehow groom our child, yet God forbid if the NRA doesn't fucking groom our kids to fucking be mass shooters. That's, there's no fucking problem there. There's no fucking problem there. You know, and like the Tennessee fucking re, uh, representative that takes the Christmas card and everybody's got an AR-15 in their hand. Now, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. You can fucking, because I guarantee you that he takes his kids, they've got, those kids are taught responsible gun ownership. I, I'll bet money on it. Mm-hmm. I'll bet money yeah, on probably, it. Yeah, probably, sure. You don't just give your kid an AR-15 and your representative and then make it known. Everybody's holding their weapon with their finger not on the trigger. I, I looked at it. I said to myself, but the problem is <sighs> when it comes down to it. So all of us that are armed and the government decides that they're going to fuck with us, we're going go, we're gonna to go to war against them. And what exactly is that AR-15 going to do with some fucking drone Tank coming down the street. Yeah. No, not not even an arm. I mean, not even a, a a man. Just a fucking drone. It's just you're in your house. You got your fucking bulletproof vest on. You got your gas mask. You got your AR-15. You got twenty thousand rounds, and they just fucking put a put a rocket right in the side of your house. Nothing. You ain't gonna do shit. You ain't you can you can get all the fucking mission. Michigan militia that you want with all their fucking and you know, we'll, we'll use IEDs, we'll use this and we'll use that and it's like they'll put fucking four Bradleys out there with fucking and, and that's the end of it. It's yeah, like, no, there, there's no, there's no, no it's, it's stupidity. Can you imagine in this school uh, shooting situation that we just had you sometimes hear people advocating for teachers carrying sidearms. Can you imagine if these officers rush in, they hear the flood of gun, the adrenaline is pumping, these guys are running toward danger, and now you've got teachers running around in the hallway with guns, or they encountered one with how about, how a about gun. The, how about they these potentially blown them away. Florida is one of the states. There's other states that are now going to basically... If you want to carry a concealed weapon, you fucking carry one. Yes. I mean, there's no... And, and I had to go through... When I got my concealed... Uh, I mean, when do, you, when, do you, when do you pull your firearm? When you're going to use it. That's the, that's, the, there's only, that's the only answer. Not to wave it at somebody that cuts you off. Not, I mean, it's like... So... We have we definitely have a mental health problem. I was going to bring that up. So th- this problem here, the, there's two tracks to this. There's the gun discussion, but we have to talk about the mental health yes. issue in this country. It is so fucked. I mean, I think it's probably getting better, but it, we're so oh, no. far behind. We're so far behind. My, my son had my son had issues, and and he would want he would he would ask my wife and I. He'd be like, you know, I I, I just I don't feel I just want to go. There's no place to go. If you wanted to go to a psych ward and, and, and a normal hospital and, and just be evaluated, 
they, they would you would be an emergency and then they'd, before they could ever get you in a, into a psych ward to be checked talk to you're gone you're out of the system we, we don't have room for you get the fuck out it needs to be it needs to be as simple as going in with a broken arm because yeah. it is mental health is 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 it's a continuation of your body so it, you can go and you can break your leg you can go and you can get serviced right away you can see a specialist and if they need to have you on a table, they'll have you on a table that night. Not the same in so many places with, with mental health care. Um, I do hear uh, politicians talking, echoing what we're talking about. I don't know the steps that are needed, but what first has to change is, the, uh, is a lot of the um, stigma that people carry about mental health situations. And... There's some awareness. I see the commercials now with some, based on some of the athletes who uh, admitted that you know they were dealing with some of that. So there's a bit of a voice now, but in practice, I don't know how much has changed. Hopefully it continues. Hopefully we, we continue on the track of getting yeah, people the help they need. As we sit at 133 mass killings slash yeah. murders... Uh, in, in America, and ten thousand two hundred and ninety-seven uh, firearm-related deaths this year already, and it's the number one cause in death in youth of America. In youth, did you see that in kids? Yeah. I have so many friends that have children that are between nine and sixteen that are just like they're at the point where it's like I, I think we're just going to homeschool like they don't like the next to me like the next kind of niche fucking market is going to be private schools that can ensure that your child isn't fucking killed yeah. when he gets dropped off armored fucking school buses pulled into it's, it's your kids are going to basically go to a fucking prison to fucking be taught well, they're now living through through these code c drills and active shooter drills and you know four and five year olds in pre-k and kindergarten are doing yeah. active shooter drills they have every to. other month i mean this my sister is a school teacher uh -huh. and she, she had a, one of the other teachers step on the back of her fucking foot as she was going up a curb and tore her fucking Achilles during an active shooter drill. Right. You know? Like, when I was a kid, we had, we had two. We had the fire alarm. Did you do air raid drills? No. We, no. We, no, we had the nuclear bomb. Oh. We had fucking the Cold War... Open Did you your have a fallout shelter in the oh, basement. Yeah, open your open your lockers in the hallway and, and sit between them because everybody knows that those fucking lockers are fucking. <laughs> there's no radiation getting out no. of you. In that. <laughs> Fuck no. Your DNA will not mutate if you're near a no. locker. And, and Most and of the kids and, I went to school with had the, mutated the, DNA. In the meantime, let's have let's have a fucking app that you can, like I said, that that's that's smarter than a paralegal because. Two, three years from now, it won't smarten up to the point where some guy in Texas wants to run that shitty electric grid, and he says, ah, fuck it, man, I'm just going to override it, and it'll be like, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm just going to shut this motherfucker down while I search for the fucking uh, launch codes. As I told my wife the other day, I said, how long before we're all trying to t fucking text at the same time during the fucking... Amber fucking red, which means like we're, we're getting ready for a full launch. Would you like to play tic-tac-toe? Jesus. Would you like to play a game? <laughs> How about oh. tic-tac-toe? Oh, well, let me tell you. Um, it would be... Summer's coming, Kevin, and, and uh, a little respite from some of the stresses that we deal with uh, every day, like some of the stuff we're talking about. The weather's starting to change, I'm noticing, here for some folks. Not, not for anyone in California, from what I'm hearing, in the uh. impending WrestleMania weekend, dealing with uh, sweater weather. 
But uh, listen, summer is just around the corner, all right? And uh, some folks are going to be considering taking off their shirt, walking on the beach, the boardwalk, the lake, wherever one might go. So get your damn body in shape. No one wants to look at my flabby, disgusting, neglected self. So FitBod is the app on my phone, and it should be the app on your phone. Smart technology is changing uh, all of our old habits and the way that we've done stuff, okay? So FitBod's AI technology would be considered something like this, okay? So it is a personalized program. If you've never seen this, put it on your app, put it on your phone, download the app, take a look at it. What you're seeing on the screen right there are some screenshots. And the ease of use of this app was a must for me. You know, I'm not a trainer, I'm not a bodybuilder, but um, but I want a smart program. Smart program meaning one that's going to adapt to what I'm doing. And that is what FitBod does. It'll take your workout to a whole new level creates a workout program personalized to your goals, your fitness level, and your available equipment. You don't even have to go out and buy anything. You don't even have to go to a gym. Use what you have at home. you got a treadmill, free weights. It will design a workout based on what you have. And the best thing, it adapts as you improve. Okay, start making progress towards your fitness goals this year with a 25% off. Okay, that's an offer exclusively to the podcast. 25% off a FitBod subscription. Okay, um... There's no better time to uh, level up your fitness habit. Try FitBod today. Okay, get your 25% off subscription. Try the app for free at fitbod.me, fitbod.me slash click, K-L-I-Q. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash K-L-I-Q. Get your 25% off and try it. Um, they are sponsoring our Stiff One of the Week this week and um you know we've been talking about march madness we've been watching we've been watching our brackets mutate like the dna that the lockers in the detroit high school would uh prevent during nuclear holocaust but um so penny hardaway former uh orlando magic uh point guard right he's a point guard uh, or shooting guard uh, two yeah okay um Coach of Memphis, here is um, here's Penny after uh, at a press conference, at a post game press conference, uh, giving no fucks uh, to the to the media. Penny, have you ever lost faith that you can get this done at Memphis? Yeah, at, at, on a, in the first half like that, when it's unfolding, is there is it embarrassing? And I think the one thing I can say to this media because this media gets kind of fucked up sometimes when it comes to me. We don't have our full roster. Y'all know we don't have our full roster. Stop asking me stupid fucking questions about <laughs> if I feel like I can do something. If I had my roster like they did, then I feel like I can do whatever I want to do. I'm coaching really hard. My boys are playing really hard. I'm not embarrassed about nothing. We have four freshmen starting. Y'all need to act like it. Act like we got 17, 18, 19 year olds out here trying to learn how to play against 22, 23, and 24. Year old guys, come on, man, stop disrespecting me, bro. Like, don't do that. I work too fucking hard. I work way too hard for that. Y'all write all these bullshit articles about me, and all I do is work. We got young kids on the floor. They got young kids on the floor. Who's 24 playing in the NCAA, by the way? Fucking ha half the San Diego State team. Yeah, are they really? <laughs> Fuck, man. With this fucking this this. Portal shit, they fucking go all over the place. That fucking, that Miller kid from Alabama, oh, he's going to be a lottery choice. If that wasn't a, 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 just a, a wake-up call with San Diego State when it was just like, he was being checked by grown fucking men. And then the game's over, and they're sitting there, and Miller, who shoots fucking three for 21... Says, oh man, this is great. This is what, what a great experience was. I'm so happy, man. Make it to the Sweet 16. Motherfucker, you're supposed to win the goddamn national championship. Fucking, you're happy? Fuck. 
Yeah, let me go ahead and waste a fucking lottery pick on you. Fuck you. I'll find some Euro kid that's played fucking four or five years over in fucking that Turkish league and bring them the fuck in. Hopefully the pros weren't watching the... uh, Oh, they were watching. (laughs) Fuck, Um, weak ass shit. Take the fucking hole, bitch. So, um, we have a tournament uh, that we are wrapping up tonight in our uh, Florida Man or Jersey Guy tournament. Fans loving this, of course. They want it to go on longer. They want the segment to be much longer. That's what I see everywhere. Everywhere I read all the comments, but we're, we're gonna we're, we're, the shot clock is in effect, and we have our final uh, th- three NBA games. NBA shot clock twenty four. <laughs> um, so we've got our final three games. So we have the the uh, the final in uh, Florida, the final in Jersey, and then we will have our championship game so the final in florida was of course the man asking the cops when he was being arrested to test his meth because he wanted to know uh uh, the potency taking on our friend uh who was uh hitting a dog from behind in an activity scene (laughs) doggy style is florida atlantic they move forward (laughs) that's it right (laughs) That's it, right? You're you're fucking a dog. I don't give a. You're asking the cop a question, or you're fucking a dog in the nativity scene. Yeah. I mean that's a that's a double digit win for fucking the doggy style man. Absolutely. So he's moving on, and we've got uh, on the Jersey side the the number one and number two seeds, the uh, toddler fight club that was organized at a uh, at a preschool, and uh, the doctor who. Uh, ejaculated on a patient there's no kind way to say this um but uh i mean i think as i'm gonna Dupre- go with i'm gonna go with dr feel good you like the doc i'm gonna go with the toddler fight club because oh, the, just the fact that i mean because one screwball you know one screwball doctor this was they were teachers maybe administrators were involved it's more than one person involved in organizing the toddler fight club see my whole thing with the toddler fight club is everybody knows that the first thing about Fight Club is you don't talk about it. So somebody basically talked about it, so they broke the, I mean, the code was broken. But it could have been caught on, maybe caught on a hidden, uh, on camera or something? Do they have cameras in the daycare? Uh, I mean, that's I, I would have to idea. investigate, and the shot clock prevents me from doing this. i got to get the ball up in the air. Doctor coming on somebody in a couple of, it'd be one thing if the teachers were fighting the kids. In this fucking society of absolute pussies, everybody's just a bitch. Fuck, if, you know. Be good to see a few, few yeah. teachers stepping up, smacking around it's the three and four years. No, years. no, it's just some fucking, some kids with fucking your little, you know. You, run, hey, you run, want to run your mouth? Maybe we go over here by the, uh, in, in, in the pit and fucking throw down. Throw down. It's like fucking uh, Dana White. He just tells you fucking, there's that thing that, that runs on Instagram. He says, you know what, man? He says, all you got to do to fucking absolutely rule this world right now is just be a savage. Just be a savage because everybody's such a fucking cunt. Is that, is that, uh, is that a Dana White? Uh, That's a Dana isn't? White. Yeah, just just be a savage. Just, I mean, I, I don't believe in hitting women, but, I mean, just be a savage. And I... I that's that's my that's, my philosophy has always been that just don't be a bitch. They can only kill you once. Correct. Now Steve has launched one from the three point line and drained it for the toddler fight club as the tiebreaker. So the toddler fight club does advance. It doesn't matter because they're fight, It's you're going up. Against, you're going up against a guy fucking a dog in a nativity scene. I mean. If I saw, if I walked in and saw a toddler fight club, or I saw the guy fucking the dog in the nativity scene, your I, attention would immediately go. I think he destroyed the nativity scene I, I as might, well. I, I might actually hold his dog while he cuts the nets down. I was gonna say he's cutting the net. <laughs> he's on the ladder, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of the twenty twenty three. Uh, we got to give it. We got to pull up his name too. He's got. He's got. This guy's got to get some. Because he's got that fucking, like, not, you've got to go into the fucking 
amount of trim time on the hair. I mean, it, this is a whole, this is a package. But not only, okay, but he's he's put together somewhat. It's I mean, it's, it's, it's a fresh it's haircut. Yeah, but it's all crooked. It's like been. it's all done by himself. It, it didn't go to a fucking. He didn't. He didn't go to the fucking. He's like he's trying to act like he's like you know, live someplace kind of urban. You know, he went in, sat down, talked to boys. That motherfucker cut his shit all fucking whacked out on something. It's all fucked up. There's a big notch in the front there. It's like, dude, you ain't got no fade going. Fuck you. So let's bring up this uh, this story here. Uh, Chad Mason, thirty six. Chad Mason, thirty six of Orlando. Thirty six of Orlando. On top of that, you're a thirty. One thing, if you're twenty one, you're thirty six years old. You're fucking mid life, and you're fucking your dog in a nativity scene. On a Sunday, I'm reading the article now, and uh, uh, he was. Uh, yeah, it was on a Sunday. It was a golden doodle, if anyone's needing oh, to conjure up an image. Um, that's, a small, Mace, that's a small dog. But you know, the funny thing is it wasn't even his dog. I'm reading this article. Mason knew the owner uh, of the golden doodle dog and was taking it out for a walk in an apartment complex around 4.30 p.m. Um, the Clearwater police said... He then began having sex with the dog in front of multiple adults and a child who was under 16. Uh, one of the adults confronted Mace, who then fled the scene to the Presbyterian Church, uh, proceeded to knock over a nativity display, <laughs> break several potted plants, and throw t- children's toys from the playground area. So, um, listen, this is this is Florida man personified, right? I mean, this is it. He was grooming that under 16-year-old to be a dog fucker. Right. By reading to his class. Yes. But um, that's it. So the winner of the tournament, congratulations, Mr. Mason. Um, good luck to you. I don't know if you I did. I did actually. Not. I did actually read where Rosa Parks didn't raise her voice. So. <laughs> Again, first time, if anyone would like to write in a Rosa Parks reference in the story of a golden doodle being raped in a nativity scene. Yeah. This is how we roll here, folks. We didn't say it was going to be like every other show on the network. Oh, fuck. You know, uh, there, yeah, okay, yeah. there's the new Kevin shirt concessions. Um, you can go up and get a, a beer and a hot dog from uh, Brian Cox. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! As an adult, don't we all miss spring break? Nothing like taking a week off from all your responsibilities. Well, here's the next best thing for adults, a spring break from house payments. SaveWithConrad.com can help you get rid of all your credit card debt, just like that. We're routinely helping our listeners save five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. And you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this, but check this out. No house payments for two months at SaveWithConrad.com. Um... You know, it is uh, it is WrestleMania uh, weekend is almost upon us. You will be hearing this, folks, uh, the day after uh, WrestleMania. Um, but uh, because it's in the news and will be talked about pretty extensively, um, I wanted to go through some of the WrestleMania memories that you might have, uh, that I have. And then I found some interesting data about uh, all of the WrestleManias. We're up to 39, right? So, aren't we 39, right? So, uh, we have enough here that we can uh, study and see how the different WrestleManias... Now, of course, your first WrestleMania as a wrestler was uh, 11. 10. Was it 10? Uh, the one in Hartford? No, I, was, I mean, I was at ringside for 10. Oh, oh, okay, right. But you had the, the match with Sean... At eleven, right? Yeah, the uh, the co-main event. Whatever, it's it, you know what they have the main events, uh, and and I, I'm in uh, I'm in none of them, so <laughs> I don't give a fuck. There's a reason, you know what? All you have to do is read that and go, <laughs> and you wonder why the motherfucker ended up with Turner. <laughs> Eat a fucking bag of dicks. Listen, it was the main event in all the fans' hearts. Come on, oh, you know that. Oh fuck. Um, the the actual the actual event 
um, WrestleMania. I think back then, is it fair to say that there was not all of the all of this stuff that all the events that lead up to it now that didn't exist in ten, eleven, or twelve, or the three that you were at, right? You didn't have this the fan access, did you back then? Like the the the, the meet and greets Shit. and yeah. If I can, uh, that's like it's the Slammies, okay? In 95, I won the Slammy for uh, Superstar of the Year. Shawn Michaels and I won it for Tag Team of the Year. There was never fucking uh, Slammies uh, awards. I was never given a Slammy. <laughs> it's like, Fuck. We were we were so jabronied out that it was like PWI was more legitimate than fucking WWF. The rank, the awards, the rankings, yeah. and the awards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just like I, I remember reading that years later. I'm like, I never got a fucking slammy. There was a time when it might have just been one year. They did, and they called it like the 37th annual Slammy Awards, something ridiculous. Where it was. It was at a in a proper theater, and they were called up, and they received, and they did production yeah. numbers. Vince McMahon did that number. Uh, oh yeah, Tom stand, Jones. Stand back, yeah. The the modern day Tom Jones uh, action right there. You had the fucking uh, uh, maroon slacks on. Fantastic, I love it. that that dance he was doing. May that be played forever. Um, Actually, fucking it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Oh come on. Fuck, you you were bad. moved, huh? You were moved by a little Vince McMahon stand back. You know that's going to be mean, playing in five nights. See Steve's <laughs> googling like a motherfucker. Find over there. that motherfucker. Let's, let's let's show a little. Let's show a little fucking Vince. It was that. It, this was at its fattest, most inflated, puffiest time. Nineteen eighty-seven WWE. You could not have gotten more overblown and overdone full production numbers by vince mcmahon who else had songs on that uh, coco beware right they, like, I, I saw a thing on instagram not so long ago where like breton and nyhart came out dancing to something maybe I mean, like, for um it was it was it, i don't know what it was i mean look at this shit there's there's Brutus on the on the, on the trumpet Ma- march fucking is that is that jake that's uh, Jake. Jake. Yeah, Jake. Take that pipe out of your mouth a minute and blow the trumpet for us. Hogan on the bass, which he was the one legitimate yeah, uh, musician okay. in the group there. A little choreography. Who's the saxophone? Brian, Brian Blair. Uh, here, here we, we go. go. Look at this. Oh, it's not maroon. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's, a, good, I, that's I, a fucking good toupee, man. I couldn't. Uh, I could say Vince doesn't wear a wig, does he? Huh? Vince no, didn't we wear used, a wig. We used oh, to you say talking that. about one of the girls. We, every time fucking Scott would go by Vince at, at a garden show, he'd always go Vince, and he'd fucking Vince, Scott would go like this. He'd go, "It's off." <laughs> there's some choreography here too. He there, there's he's. Moving and I, I would just love to see this like the rehearsal. How like, did I, I? I'm just wondering how Hogan let him like be so like not in the shot. I just not like. Granted, well, he gets me, a solo though. He gets a solo in this. If what I, the oh. fact that I remember this is terrifying. But I think it, look at fucking Vince's ass. Oh. This is unbelievable. This is total bearskin rug situation here. Oh, this is that fucking kiss my ass. This is where it all started. He watched his back. He goes, oh, I bet you some of the boys wouldn't mind me just fucking putting a, a cracked cheek, put my ass right in their fucking mouth. I'll put my glutes up against Bill Watts any day. And he just see him at rehearsal, like, all right, um, is is this where uh, is this where I, I is this where I pirouette? Is this where I turn? Like serious Vince. I would have loved to have seen some behind the scenes footage. Look at him, tremendous. A natural born performer, Kevin. You know the back of the back of the that's vest why, is maroon. That's, that's what I, you remember. Yeah, that's why I love that. That's why I absolutely love Vince right there. Right? Could, would Ted Turner do that? No. No. And here's the Hogan bass solo. Okay, so he does get his moment there. Um, <clears> okay. 
you know, with the TNT show, he did the Johnny Carson bit. Vince wasn't afraid to try anything. And uh, as someone who you know well uh, told me recently, and you probably concur, Vince was successful because he threw out every idea that came to mind. Some of the shittiest ones that people had ever heard came out of his mouth. But a few of them would stick, and that's what they'd go with. And nobody hears the shit that... Look at the intensity. This is it's like fucking James Brown. Do I have to fucking make another fucking command call and say, Uncle? Yeah, are we gonna, you going to throw in the towel? I'm yeah. just enjoying the the, uh, the commitment on Jim Brunzel's I, face I, I, that he's I, I, actually playing the, the sound. All of them. It's, it's, I mean, it's... What did they make for that? Now, Kevin, now you know that this has to be a payday. You can't work for free. That's a 10.99. You, they have to go to this theater. They have to uh, dance, learn the the trumpet moves that they had going on. Is this a, a fifteen hundred dollar day? Is this a two thousand dollar day? Circa nineteen eighty seven. Probably a, a fucking eight ball. <laughs> Zahorian was in charge of the payments. Yeah, that that era. At the you, pay you, window. You could, you could, yeah, you could get fucking. You could get a. A month, month full of ro- month uh, worth of roids or an eight ball. <laughs> um, before you went out for your first WrestleMania match, is there um, is there added stress? Is there an added intensity to no, the event, or is it just would, another pay per view for you? When you run three hundred and twenty days a year, it's fucking. I remember going to to, to SummerSlam with Scott. We were so exhausted. We'd work the night before. Yeah. And it was just like, fuck. It was like, he's, Scott and I just kind of just went through, like. Flying uh, Delta didn't get your bags. Yeah, yeah I know. It just. I saw fucking an, uh, on Instagram, I was looking at uh, Braum Strowman's. Uh huh. You know, he's got Polaris, is, you know, bring, brought in some trike for him to drive around this week and. You, know, you go into the cities now, and there's uh, on, on the on the on the, on the uh, lights. There's fucking pictures of the fucking performers, and it's like Super Bowl coming in at the time. Yes, it is like the Super Bowl. Yeah. It invades the city. Uh, when, when WrestleMania back back in the day when we were there was like, you know, <laughs> the Merchant Marines were coming in town for their fucking annual convention. <laughs> What was your WrestleMania, your first WrestleMania payday? Do you remember it? T- ten grand for to. I was only out. I was only stood out there for like a minute. What about your match? Eleven. Two fifty, maybe. Two hundred fifty. How out of line with like SummerSlam is that? Like, oh, is, how much? Uh, um, depend on, uh, I would say five times. Wow. Okay. So yeah. So the, the significance of WrestleMania is real, bro. How about, uh, 12 in Anaheim with Taker? 275. Some more. Okay. Was this at a time when, um, uh, uh, I want to say uh, ro- royalties is the word I'm looking for. I'm not stoned today. Um, were you collecting on any of the? You didn't get videotape stuff, right? Ever? Yeah. Oh, you did. So, like, when the DVD, when the I guess at this time the the, the cassette, video cassette of WrestleMania would come out. No, I don't. Rem- I don't remember specifically during that era ever getting a royalty check. But I know that later in life, when I you know, I started, you know, getting them later in life, but got a little smarter with, with uh, or Jesse Ventura cleared the way with the lawsuit. I, I, who what, what knows, changed? Who, know, who knows what, what the what the what opened Pandora's box? I hope I've stayed close enough to the microphone this show because I get so fucking tired of. of being, I think you have. I've got, I've got the. I'm just about fucking deep throat in this fucker during the entire. I do like the close up today, though. I want to tell you, I think w- women ac- across the country are are sitting on their laptops right now. I just I just want to say the the nice up close Nash view is probably helping 
a lot of the ladies out. Um, I don't want to get off WrestleMania yet, though. Um, the lead up to a WrestleMania, how far out are you booking? Uh, what's going to happen? You back you, then? Well, I, I can only go, only back, go then, back, back then. Back then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <sighs> fuck! Six months. I was going to say, would you know six months out that you're going to main yeah. event and get the title or lose the title or whatever's going to happen? Yeah. You know a story I've never told? I'd love to hear one. Uh, maybe I have. Maybe, did you ever hear the Mike Tyson story? No. When I, I got, think. so I, I get a call and they're going to pick me up. I'm going to go to the production studio and have a meeting with Vince. Mm-hmm. So if you go in the production studio and I go into one of the sound rooms with Vince and when you go into the sound room, it's like a sound room in a, in a recording studio. So it's soundproof, mm-hmm. yet it's glass on both sides so you can, people can see into it. Like, you know, it's, it's, not, mm-hmm. it's not his office where if you, want, if you were going to murder him, nobody would be able to come to his, his assistance. Mm-hmm. So he had told me that I wasn't going to lose the championship for years, no matter what. I wasn't going to lose the championship for years. Mm-hmm. And so we go in there, and he starts telling me about this idea he had where I'm going to box Mike Tyson in Central Park, (laughs) and it's for charity. And he's going on and on about this. This sounds familiar. Okay, go ahead. And I said to him, I said... I'm not fucking. I said Mike Tyson will knock me the fuck. I, I, he, he could he could conceivably kill me. I, I mean, I watch fucking. I'm a boxing fan. Like a big motherfucker like me, like he fucking puts two or three fucking shots. He does the he does the old fucking hook to the hook to the body, hook to the body, uppercut. Good night, Irene. It's not going to mm-hmm. do me any favor. So I'm like, I said, I'm not fucking fighting him for less than five million dollars. And we go back and forth, and he's, oh, and then on, and then just like, like you would clear your throat. <coughs> By the way, you're going to drop the belt of bread at Survivor Series. <laughs> and I said, you <laughs> fucking <laughs> sat here for 45 minutes. I love it. And told me this fucking horse shit about boxing Mike Tyson to fucking... Tell me that you want me to drop the fucking strap to Brett. Motherfucker, you could have done that on a goddamn telephone. Oof. That's brilliant. Like, I don't care. He can have it. Like, fuck. Are you kidding me? That's tremendous. God. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. You know what? Bring, bringing up WrestleMania, bringing him up like you know, like the Lawrence Taylor going on after us. <laughs> all it does is me leaving Thursday. Is just it's it, it's just bad. It, it's I don't have a good WrestleMania memory. From 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 any of the previous none. Really? Maybe fucking sitting up there with my son and and drinking with fucking bogs and getting fucking hammered to the point where they they <laughs> they, they stopped serving alcohol uh to the fucking people that the VIPs uh from then forward and bogs was just fucking it was it was great it was it was and my my son just got to hang with all the boys and he was probably 13 or 14 you know uh-huh. and it was just that was such a fucking a great, you know, experience him to just see what a bunch of kooks that his dad fucking lived with that. And, but, and he, and he, he was just like, he didn't know who Boggs was. Right. Like, he's probably like, you know, one of the greatest third basemen of all time. It's just yeah. like, this he's like, this is like, this is a hall of fame first ballot guy. I have a funny Wade Boggs story. Uh, actually, I um, I told a story on air how I, br- I had to bring the blind sports writer Ed Lucas to the to Yankee Stadium right. and, and walk him around. And I was on the field, and that's, you know. But I go into the to the uh, the locker room, 
clubhouse, do they call it, maybe? I walk into the locker room, the Yankees fucking locker room, and the first thing I see is Wade Boggs' ass right in front of me. He's bent over adjusting something, and they, they just walk around. Everyone's naked. Right? I guess everyone's showering constantly before the fucking games. And literally, his, his stomped, drippy, aging ass was right in front of me. And that's uh, that's my one. Did, way, way did, did he memory. Your memory is much cooler. Did, did you did you want to fucking hit him with a little bit of the clubman? A, a, a <laughs> little bit of the clubman uh, talc, talc, a little bit. Yeah. Looked, looked to be a little moist. Yeah, might have um, might have needed it. But uh, yeah, that was uh, Wade Boggs' ass was my introduction to Wade Boggs. So, um, so then the Hall of Fame begins to happen, Kevin, in conjunction with WrestleMania. So now you're being brought out, whether you're working the WrestleMania or not, years later, uh, to participate in, in these. Are, are you going when you're not involved, when you're not inducted? Are you in, are you in the crowd watching? Do they bring you out? To, no. Uh, the first time, I think the first time I went to one was when um, Shawn Michaels went in and then when Scott went in. Right. And then once they went in, I started going, because Paul was, you know, Paul was heavily involved at that point, and now in mm-hmm. the, you know, in the company. So, right, like WrestleMania was a chance to, for all of us to to see each other. Right. But now you can do that this year. No, because fucking Sean and and uh, Sean oh. and Triple H are fucking. Yeah, Sean and Paul are fucking busy. Yeah, a little bit. I'm listen. I'm sure when you guys are all in the same city, there's no keeping you apart. I'm sure you'll be. I'm no, sure there's, there's no. no there's no magoo. There you guys will be, all be together. There won't be a fucking. There won't be a. There, it, I'm not counting on it. Hmm. I'm in. I'm in and out. I'm. In, I'm I've got a couple of things. I want. I'm going to see my friend uh, Adam Rodriguez and his family. Um, that I did the Magic Mike's with. Oh, the actor from, uh, yeah, Magic yeah. Mike. Yeah. I'm going to, that's, that, that's, I'm going to see Adam. I'm going to see, I'm going to see Grace. I'm going to see Frank. I'm going to see um, Georgie and I'm going to see, I'm going to see my, my, my boy B, Bridges. Who's that? His family. I'm going to see Oh, that. oh, oh, oh. I, 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 I've, I've basically got it. I, I've known, I've known Frankie, his uh, his eldest, since she was at Magic Mike too. She was just she might be in nine months because we, I remember that they wow um, they rented a place in in uh, in uh, Savannah and we had to make sure we had you know the baby gates and everything else because it was mm-hmm. the second floor. And she was she was just a little little monster. And now she's now I listen to her and she she uh, I was. Adam had a uh, Instagram today where she was singing, and she sings like an angel. And just like, yeah. and she was singing. Uh, the last time I saw her, she was singing the, uh, that's the cram uh, that cranberries in your head. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah. fighting in your head. She was singing that, and she's got a great voice. And I was like, that was one of T's favorites. And it just gave me. I, I got chills right now. Mm. And it was just like, uh, you know, life life goes on. Yeah, the you circle, know? brother. Yeah, you know it's a funny thing. We're talking about the Hall of Fame. I got a an email from uh, Gary Hart's son, uh, who I stay in periodic contact with after Gary's passing. As most people know, some don't. We uh, we were we were the last people to work with Gary. At, he did a guest booker for us. Uh, he flew out here. He filmed it. Uh, flew home and passed away. So that was kind of a tough thing for all of us. And so I've always stayed in touch with, with his sons. And his son, Jason, wrote and wants me to ask Kevin to tell Ricky, Rick, I guess, to me, Ricky, to if you're related to uh, Gary Hart, tell Ricky, thank you for doing Kenji's induction speech and that Chad and I are proud to have him representing us. We are very proud of Kenji. Dad would be too. Thanks, Brother Jason. So if you run into Rick, tell him that Gary Hart's family wants to thank him for doing Muda's induction speech. There you go. 
real real time uh, real time uh, uh, incident here. And uh, there you go. Listen, back to WrestleMania for a minute. Really, Vince, Mc- Vince McMahon. I yeah. Fucking, I, I, okay. Well, just a bummer, but go ahead. So, all right. So, talking about WrestleMania in any capacity is a bummer. To me, it is. Can we talk about Starcade? I think the only, I think the only WrestleMania that I can I can uh, talk with any kind of um, that I enjoyed was when um, we came down in Triple H's match against Sting at uh, Levi Stadium at the Forty Nine ers Stadium. I got a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar payday. A two hundred and seventy five thousand dollar payday. You you would have to work very hard for me to not enjoy WrestleMania with a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar payday. Well that made up for the fucking three hundred and fifty dollars that you got in Erie and the four hundred and seventy dollars in Poughkeepsie and you know. Basically, your, enti- your entire year was based on your WrestleMania payday, whether or not you could put a, a dime into a, an, a, an account. That's, fuck, it's, it was horrible. It was a very tough time to be yeah, in it was, it WWE. Sucked. It fucking sucked. This was the- That's why I, so I, I left my friends. I left the place that made me. I, I, did, I was forced- because if I couldn't fucking raise a family, and it's really funny. My perspective has changed so much in the four months since my son's gone, because now it's just me and my wife, and I was always kind of, I kind of always watched what I said or what I did because I didn't want any of my heat to translate back to my son in any mm. form or fashion. And now I just don't give a fuck about Are you anything. angry with WWE? No. I'll, I'll, just, I'll wait and see when my next royalty check comes out. If it's anything like the first one, it's just like, well, then I'll just realize that that's no longer a fucking a, an entity that I need to worry about and... Yeah, well, you've been a very loyal guy. I, I have to. So. You, you're not indebted to, I'm loyal, to any company. I'm, I'm, you're I'm, a free I'm, agent. I'm, you can I'm do, loyal. Uh, I'm loyal to Paul. I'm loyal. This, I'm, I'm before, loyal to not, my friend not Vince before he left. I couldn't be. I couldn't be loyal to Vince because I fucking left. You left, but you went back. Yeah, but I. I it's like anything else. I. And I left again and went to TNA because I was fresh. I, I got shit on again. So it's like, at this point, the only person I'm loyal to in this business is me. Hmm. So does it stand to reason that if, I don't know, if, if opportunities present themselves elsewhere, that it's something you're open to as a 1099 free agent? <sighs> you know, the last thing I'm looking for in life right now is um, obligation. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can. I, I, now, so he wants to send a private plane for me. You'd have to find a billionaire to do that, Kevin. That that might be that might be a fucking game changer. <laughs> uh, if only billionaires owned wrestling federation. Yeah, right? imagine that. Me working oh, for damn. you. Oh! So back to wrestling. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, hey, guys, need to call a quick time out here. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling my listeners over at OU didn't know for a while now about all the cool things happening over at adsfreeshows.com. A brand new series has arrived on Ad Free Shows. Top of the card unpacks everything you need to know in the wrestling trading card space. And we're starting with the granddaddy of them all, the 1982 Wrestling All-Stars Series A set. Now, this set was not exclusive to any one territory at the time, as we were still right at the tail end of the territory era of professional wrestling. So it was a basically a who's who in professional wrestling, with card number one being Andre the Giant, 
others included in the set include Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, and others. 20 years ago, Eric took on Stone Cold in the main event on Raw, but the real main event was the confrontation that happened backstage before the show. Now, the next week, I'm sitting in this chair, and that same guy, I don't think I had said a word to him that day. I don't think I had seen Rick up until the point he came through that door. And he's, you know, getting me, he's just telling me to get up, get out of the chair. And he's so pissed off, he's bleeding. I'm on the phone, and he's got blood <laughs> running down his chin because he bit his lip. He was so mad, he bit the inside of his mouth. He's got blood on a backstage confrontation. I hadn't even gotten out of the chair yet. <laughs> Ad-Free Show's members got to sit shotgun alongside Kevin Nash and click this co-host, Sean Oliver, as they watch back some of the worst matches in history. None more so than the Yeti. Randy the, now. The mummy is not Frankenstein. You don't walk with your arms straight out. With like the that. arms out, right? And, a, and yeah. you know, a, a Yeti is also not a mummy, but... I don't know. Was this Jim Hurd? Who was here? Well, well, whose brainchild was this? Who gives a fuck? That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself why Ads Free Shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adsfreeshows.com. I do need to say something, though. So I, 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 I um, had the, the privilege yes. to uh, work the Richmond Comic Con and... I got to spend the entire weekend next to one of my favorite people on the planet, Mick Foley. Hmm. And we had dinner both nights, Friday and Saturday night, and we watched the basketball games. I had no idea that Mick is as crazy about hoops as I am. Um, just had what did he eat? Is he eating healthy? What, what did he eat when you guys ate together? We, we, this is what I'm interested yeah, in. Yeah, he eats. I mean, he doesn't eat garbage. Okay. He, he, eats, he, eats, he eats well. Um, and then uh, next, to, next to Mick was um, Britt Baker, the, mm -hmm. de the dentist from AEW. Mm -hmm. And we got a chance. To, I got a chance to. I met, I've met her several times. I met her, God, when she was young. At, 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 at working, you know, when she first broke in. Yeah, there we are. It's a, I was representing the NWO. Those shirts are available on uh, WWEshot.com. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, so it, we, I hear we, they're we, marked down about 50%. Motherfuckers. Can you grab yourself a T-shirt for nine ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Wonder, wonder, wonder why my fucking royalty check's so fucking high. Exactly. Uh, I guess I... Well, <laughs> Anyway, so I got a chance, to, to, and then we ended up uh, traveling. She was going to take um, a different airline out of Richmond, but it was all fucked up, and she wasn't going to get home. So the, the, the convention promotion changed her flight and got her on Delta. And so we, we, we ended up, like, Driving to the airport together and, 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 and traveling, and, and she sat in first. She sat across the aisle from me in first class, and we just talked. And um, she was just. She said to me, she said that, that she was really disappointed that, that that I didn't watch the show. <laughs> and I said, I said, you know, I said that started as a tweet. And a guy asked, I wonder what Austin says or thinks or whatever. And I said, don't worry, he's not watching. And then Taker, you know, said, you know, huge pop. And then I came back on the show because I was being trolled by the, by the, by the Twitter universe. And I said, yeah, I mean, Steve made a pact that, you know, we, yeah. you, can you imagine... If, the, if you've ever been on on, on the fucking uh, on a phone conversation with 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 uh, Kevin Nash and, and and Stone Cold, we ain't talking fucking wrestling, and we're definitely not making a pact not to watch AEW. Probably so, talking royalty checks. Yeah, well, that, right. and then that. And that got carried everywhere. I saw it like yeah, in the wrestling it, news it, yeah, that I, you and Steve have a pact not to watch. 
eight. And it's just so. like, <laughs> it sure is funny how it, it, for somebody that, did, that doesn't have a pack for AEW, that it's, it, you know, it's um, clearly fucking shows up on my DVR every every Wednesday when I when I leave here. And I always yes. and I I, I, go, I go through it just like I I do Raw. I don't watch anything. I, I only watch their Wednesday show, and I only watch I watch Raw. Mm-hmm. Those are my those are my two, and I feel that I stay pretty current to you know what's going on. But the, the, what what I did watch was after the uh, the tournament games. On TBS, they showed that new behind-the-scenes AEW show. Yeah, the new show. Did you happen to see that? No, I didn't see it. So I saw that. Me and that. Steve Austin have a pact. Oh, okay. So yeah. I saw that, and I had small talk with, with Brett on uh, on Friday. I walked in Saturday, and I said, fuck, I said, how much heat do you have? And she said, why do you say that? I said, I said that fucking show was basically just you. It was you and Adam, it was her, her and her boyfriend. And um, I said, that was the, the, kind of the main storyline. And um, uh, she said, oh, you watched it. She said, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't watch it. I said, yeah, I watched it. And that's when she's, you know, she said, well, you know, that's when we, we talked about the whole me not watching it. And she said, kind of hurt Tony's feelings that you said you didn't watch the show. I said, fuck, I I've, I've came to his defense when CM Punk was being a dick. Uh-huh. You know, I said I've never had a problem with Tony. So, anyway, I don't know where that was going. Yeah, that's, that's I, 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 love that's the stories. Just yeah, I know. I just said it allowed us to look at a picture of Brett, which is you know it's always yeah. a good day. Let's pull that back up. Yeah, look, fuck. She's got she, she's got she's got some kicks on. She's yeah. got strong sneaker game. We can zoom, Steve. We, we don't have to leave Nash in the entire frame, right? No, he certainly zoom. would not be offended if we. I would if we not zoom be offended. Past your ass and uh, cameraman. Zoom. Zoom on the doctor. Zoom the, the doctor's spectrals. Yeah, there you go. So you can't fucking. Yeah. Is that an AEW shirt? Oh no, you have an NWO shirt. All right, NWO. I, was just, I was checking. There uh, you go. Yes, pretty girl, sweetheart. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, Bubba. You know what? We're talking about we've we've covered wrestling. We've covered. Uh, I would actually basket. go get I, I, as much as I hate going to the dentist. I I, I would have to say that I would you, fucking. You wouldn't mind having her in your mouth? No, nah, I, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want anybody. You know, I would, I would hate to have an attractive woman scraping tartar off the back of my fucking. Didn't say she'd be doing that. By Cuspis. You know what? The NFL draft. Well, she's in love. She's, she's in love, so she ain't doing All it. All right. She's in love. We, we have an entertainment Jesus show here. We have to have Christ. some fun, for Christ's sake. Listen, the Why NFL is draft is uh, upon us. Wait your, wait your 64 and see how fucking how, how much fucking time you got in your brain to fucking look at a piece of ass and go, you know what I'd like to do? Boy, I'd like to fucking take her to fucking a really nice dinner, go get a fucking room, Fucking kiss on her neck, tell her sweet nothings. You know what? Fuck that. I'll watch the news. Right. I'd like to make it to 64. My triglycerides are not going to allow this. Listen, Cut your fucking... You I pick your fucking car. I'm an no. addict. I'm an You've addict. You've got okay, I'm an addict. fucking children. I'm an addict. What's, you, you're not... You can get buy a fucking treadmill. I'm a, I have... It's... it's 20 feet from me, yeah, the other take, side of the office. T- take the fucking suit coats off it and get, walk on that motherfucker. As you got hanging it always on becomes it. a close hanger. <laughs> always. I fucking I went to get on my fucking pre-core the other day. I'm like, this thing's been in the house for two weeks. It's got fucking more shit on it than anything in the house. You don't know how special that I am. I got rid of my last treadmill and said, if I got a new one, that's the answer. I got rid of the other one. I got this one. It's sitting here. The NFL draft, i got to talk to you about this, Kevin, because the draft is here and the most exciting prospect uh, is the prospect of being perfectly groomed head-to-toe with our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped has long had elite downfield play with their lawnmower 4.0, but in 2023 they have the rookie sensation Beard Hedger. To ensure the face of your franchise is a pretty one, okay? The one-two punch of men's grooming is the best acquisition for any at-home GM. 
The analogy continues. So go to manscaped.com and save some salary cap with our code KLIQ. That's click. And you get 20% off and free shipping. Listen, a lot of these groomers that are out there, I had one where I would groom my, my underarm hair, okay? And what would happen was the cut, I'm going to use the wrong vernacular here, but the cut was coarse in some way. So I would actually feel like the edges of what I'd shaved was not a, a smooth, fine cut, and it, and it irritated. I have to tell you that the manscaped lawnmower takes your body hair to task. It knocks it out, cuts it, nice, sharp cut. Their blades are top-notch. And listen, uh, with all the power that the lawnmower has, it's still the best nibble on the field with its skin-safe technology. And that's what it's all about, okay? It reduces nicks and snags while making all the right cuts on your hair. It's titanium blades, and that's why what I'm talking about is so exciting, okay? Single-stroke efficiency can have you go from a bushy, uh, good God, uh, to, uh, to as shaved as you want to make it. Let's try to keep this PG here. If you haven't upgraded your grooming tools already, head to Manscaped for a champion worth roster reset. You're going to get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use the code CLICK. From Mr. Irrelevant to a first-round pick with Manscaped. Thank you, Manscaped, for coming aboard. You're my first-round pick. So, uh, during, during uh, first off, I have to say this. I fucking go on the road and I forgot my nose, my Manscaped nose hair cl- clipper. Oh, the nose hair trimmer. So, yes. I wake up Saturday morning <clears throat> and I went from Friday, I, I trimmed Thursday before I left, thought I put it in my bag. Was gonna, and I usually do it at night because that's it's 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 tedious to really get in there. You you got to spend some time now. The the, the manscape that they send us the the two point oh, mm-hmm. it's a little bit more of a weed whacker to get in there. It, when, when you when you your hair turns gray to this degree, that shit's like fucking. It it battles that weed that fucking like that manscape the is samurai. Like, yeah, that manscape is just like, oh, you motherfucker. You want to go? We'll go. And my hair is like, okay. So I wake up, and I've got those ones that are like inside that far, like up in that, that, that cavern up in here. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm like, and I look, and there's like five. And I know that everybody that's going to see me throughout the day, especially if I'm standing, is going to be looking right up my nose. Right up here. And they're going to get a... a Bushy uh, hole, like a uh, 70s it's, porno. Yes, it's a I mean, bushy it's, hole. You know, so I end up taking a washcloth and pinching and pulling those fucking hairs out to the point where it looked like somebody, like I, it looked like I was a, a seventh grade girl that got kicked off the fucking cheer team. I was crying so hard. Mm. And I said to myself, like, wow, like, I like so when I came home, the first thing I did be, before I even took my dirty clothes, I, I, I should say this: when I got home, woke up, put up the hurricane shutter, and saw my bag sitting on the porch from whenever the fuck Delta dropped it off, and brought it in. And the first thing I did was I opened my toiletry kit. And I put my weed whacker in there because I have two of them now. So I got mm-hmm. my travel weed whacker and my, you know, my my home weed whacker. And they also I also have my my like because they sent me two kits. So I have like my my um the beard the beard the bra- the, bra- oh, the brush no the brush. oh that brush yeah oh that brush is just uh, I, I I sit in my room watching TV and just brush my shit. My shit has gotten so much softer since the conditioner. And all the other things, it's like, I mean, I, I think I look pretty fucking stellar tonight. Your little son, 
Shit's all trimmed up. A little bit. Yeah, thanks, Manscaped. I say that. Now I just got. Now I just got to find somebody to put me on a fucking private plane, and my fucking life's made. (laughs) We can make that happen. (laughs) Can make that happen. Thank you, Manscaped. I I got. I got to say this though, Uh, Steve. Um. AEW All Access Sneak Preview draws. 738,000 views. So Na- Nash was uh, one of those 738,000. Yeah. It's close to our numbers here. All right, Ask Nash. Hashtag Ask Nash is how you can do this out there and be part of it. Kevin, very difficult to get an audience with Kevin Nash these days, especially with Flying Delta might even make it to you. So this is the way to do it. Hashtag Ask Nash. And Fernam Schnavitz. You know what's funny? You know, yeah. it's, it's, actually, it's not funny. When fat people fall. No. It's um, I have came to the, I mean, it, I'm so close to saying that's it. Taking Twitter down, taking Instagram down, and not leaving my house. Like I'm, I'm probably two or three more more fuck ups. So anybody out there that never wants to see me again, besides on on this fucking fuck Your dreams up, coming fuck, true. Fuck yeah, fuck with my bag. Fuck because I am. I'm just. It's. I, I mean, I, 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 I talked to Popeye the other day, and he said he said Kev. He says it's all you can stand. Because you can't stand no more. You just need a different, you just need to switch things up. You need a different mode of travel. Private plane, you know, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Get you around a little easier. Tra- Look, I, you guys travel. Maybe I just need a little appreciation. A little appreciation. Okay. I think you're appreciated by many, by millions. I, I, a lot of people that tell me that, 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 this past weekend in Richmond, I said, you know, you know, Kevin, you're loved by a lot of people. And I said, I, and I thank you, and, I, and I, it, it means the world to me. And I, and I get that. And don't think I, I fucking take that lightly. But you know what, man? When you're fucking Dustin Hoffman, you're sitting in a chair in Marathon, man, there's only one motherfucker that's on your mind. And that's that motherfucker that's fucking with you. So. Right. Even though the rest of you are the fucking oil of clove. Sometimes, man, that motherfucker with the drill is just too much. Well, there's always somebody with the drill, whatever the drill is. Somebody you're working with, the IRS, somebody's always got the drill. So the, the, the drill man's never going to... Lawrence Olivier is never putting down the drill. No. You just have to... Um, decide to whether to tell him if it's safe. Fernam Schnavitz uh, would like to know, what did you think of Len Bias in college? I was in my single-digit years of life, so I wasn't quite old enough to watch. I heard he was compared to Jordan as far as talent. He almost moved like Jordan. You know, like the, even when he did like that hitch dunk. You know, he was like a... He, he, of course, he didn't have Jordan's range. Right. Uh, but just, he was like a six foot ten Jordan. Yeah, I was. Well, I was a Celtics fan, of course. Yeah. So I, um, I remember the Len Bias saga. Um, do you think uh, so? Of course, he I wouldn't have been. He wouldn't have replaced Jordan. But where would he have gone on to be? Would he have been? You never know. He could have you know, all star. Uh, oh, I mean, multi year all star. You know, I, I would have said I would have said that with Od- Odom that we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Like Greg Odom, I would have thought that, you know, that he would be a be, the, the, the big guy from Philadelphia right now. Mm-hmm. You know, Joel, I th- just, I, you just, it's like that dude that, that played with the Celtics for a while that like tore his, like turned his foot backwards, white boy. What Back, year? When oh, couple, I mean, in the last seven or eight years. I oh, was, I have no fucking idea. It, he played with a jazz. Uh, he had hops. He could shoot it, and he just had a couple injuries. And I mean, he was the, the, the he was the, like the next bird, and then 
he turned his foot fucking backwards and he was that was that's all it takes right is that one fucking yeah. injury you know it's, it's like uh george for the clippers you know that fucking horrible injury that he had it's amazing mm-hmm. that that he came back and it's the stud that he is but uh yeah it's ha- just why it takes you know one, one fucking one, one wrong land and well, you were, um, when you did your knee in Germany, um, w- was there any, you you returned? I'm trying to remember. Did you rehab that, or that was it? Yeah, I mean, it was, everything was so, you know, this is, God, 84-ish. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, this is fucking Brian Piccolo. <laughs> fucking tell Kevin know, I'm, song I'm, I'm yeah I'm Gail Sayers with the fucking you know the weight on the fucking Ted Williams sand sand weight bench you know, with a towel underneath my knee trying to get my my range of motion back I mean it isn't I, I look at my, my buddy Kevin woke that that is uh you know he, he was the uh, re- guy that did all my rehab for Andrews and like every fucking time He's a great follow if you if you're into any, any kind of rehabilitation. His name's Kevin Wilk, uh, and like just the shit that they come up with on a daily basis. That even when I did when I did my uh, my quad, like nobody did soft tissue work on the IT band in order to loosen it so you could it would be easier to range. Just mm. wasn't wasn't a practice where now that with, with the IT band is the restrictor and actually getting you back to your range of motion, you know that IT band just fucking turns to concrete. Mm. So, but yeah, that's it. Was just it was, I was fucked. Javi El Sampler Pod, uh, what's your opinion on Spanish and Argentinian wines? I like them as they are good quality versus their cost. Do you have any that you would recommend? I, you know, the Melbics, are, the, 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 I think it's called Re, Rojo, R-O-J, R-O-J. Rojo? Rojo, is that what the Spanish Yeah, wine? for red. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, they're both a little too... Um, They're just not, I, I I just like a, a, a fuller bodied wine than that. I think they're fine. They're too like, light. I, you're I, yeah, it's just like somebody saying like, if, if somebody was to tell me like, oh, you know what I like is a good Beaujolais, I'd be like, what? <laughs> Drink that for like a fucking like month. I put that shit in the refrigerator. It's more fun to <laughs> say than Merlot, though. Yeah, Beaujolais. Mongo says, I was at a nitro in Greenville, South Carolina, when Scott came out, quote-unquote, drunk. You and Bischoff came down to get him to the back. My question is, was that a work? work. It's always been a question between me and my buddies. Work. Work. Okay. Mark Caps, are there any more Bob Nash tales we haven't heard yet? Also, the down where? Down here choke made me pop. He's clearly 11 years old. New T-shirt. I'm a Barbara Eden guy. Uh, maybe we do a Nash knows best seg. Bob Nash knows best segment. Just some wisdom from Bob Nash. Um, any stories come to mind you haven't shared yet? Bob Nash. Uh, now he passed when you were how old? Eight. Eight. See, so you had li- very limited time. I remember one time we were at, at the. Uh Hudson's was the the big department store in Detroit, and um, we went down for the Thanksgiving uh, parade at Hudson's. Mm-hmm. You know, we had our own Santa and the whole fucking bit. It was our Macy's Day parade. It was covered by you know the uh, two two four and seven in, in Detroit, and um, so we're you know on the uh, curb and like three or four like you know younger probably 20s you know somethings you know came and basically stood in front of my my mom and 
the three the three of us my my, my two siblings and myself and uh I just remember my mom like just turning and going, Bob, I can't see. By the time the last E came out of her mouth, he had taken the, the, the guy closest to him by the shoulder and pushed all three of them. It was three or four of them. I know there was at least three of them into the fucking street where it was like slush and like, th like basically threw him on the ground. And um, like basically balled up his fist and just didn't say a word and just hovered over him. And then they just got up and just fucking like they, they scattered. And it was just like, you know, he just like just walked back over and like stood next to us like, OK, let's watch the parade. Cleared the view for his woman. I tell you what, man, when, when, when I saw Gran Torino. And that great scene when he says, you know, you, there's that time when you meet that, 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 that motherfucker that you, you, you never want to fucking, you know, that, that whole deal when he does the fucking. I didn't see it. I was watching AEW. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was, I, I think that my, uh, I think my dad, uh, I think they got some of the fucking, Echoes of Bo echoes of Bob in that scene. And, yeah, in Gran Torino, because I know that fucking my socialization process of the eight years with Bob has etched in my. I mean, it's to this made day, an impression. But, yes, I you like, I hey, cause you fucking you hang. I ain't hanging a fucking painting. I ain't doing dick. Yeah, you know, whatever. There's I a do. man that gets paid to <laughs> yep. do that. Absolutely. Let's there's keep a, him employed. There's a man that gets there's a man that, there's a man that get, gets paid to do that. It's called a malprostitute. If you want your fucking hose fucking sucked, let him do it. <laughs> Fernum, another question. Kev, have you ever watched On Patrol Live? They feature both Daytona PD and Volusia County Sheriff's Department. I don't blame you for not wanting to leave the house. There's a lot of dumb motherfuckers running around. Lock the doors. That's one of the few shows I watch on a regular basis. And yes, they have the Volusia County Sheriff I and Daytona, it. and it's unbelievable what's going on. I day. watched it um, in a in a hotel room because you, you you know when you go to a hotel like when you have my system, it, it, it's like there are so many. It's like, like do I go to Amazon, Hulu? Do I you know do I YouTube? Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I just stand direct? You go to a fucking that Hilton we were in in Richmond. You had thirty six fucking channels. I'm That's like, it, right? What the fuck? Thirty six channels. What is the Red Roof Inn from fucking seventy seven? But they had that. I think the channel is called Reels. But they yeah, had Reels. They had that. It was impressive. And they had True TBS and TNT, so they had all the fucking games. Yeah. So I was in fucking heaven and Sports Center. So. Turner passed on my pitch. I saw that. Shocking. Shocking. Thought there would have been great crossover with, uh, with uh, Tony's product there. Well, time for Amazon next, next week. Uh, but anyway, so yes, so the Daytona and Volusia. See, they follow like seven departments or something like that. And each city, the crimes, the people, they kind of take on their own identity. And... Um, like you've got, they have one department out in, in Nevada that they follow Nye County it's called and that's all I fast forward through it's always some you know meth looking person out in a trailer in the middle of the desert you know but it's like ghosts not only shit. that though man it's like they, they go out on their property and it's like a single wide with like 21 of those little sheds around. it's like looks like like something from a horror film like, I wouldn't even fucking, I, I would just, I would wait for the canines. <laughs> exactly. Don't like, go in alone. Fuck, I ain't going. No way, man. I, I watched one of those. That, that's, I swear I watched that episode. I mean, the fucking, it's so dark that yeah, the flashlight dark. fucking basically is the, it, it's like, 
Now, fuck that. Afraid of what my light would land on, just moving it around on the property. Yeah, and then so then they've they've got the the Florida coverage in in Daytona and Volusia, and it's they had a they had a fucking alligator uh, mangled a guy a couple of weeks ago. I'm I'm always afraid of that when I'm down there. That that there's a gator in waiting somewhere. You encounter alligators? I feel like I'm I'm gonna get eaten by an alligator. <coughs> I, I I do not walk. There's a, there's a, uh, a street. Um, a road called Peninsula, and it is um, it, uh, what is it? Two two streets down, like ocean, then t- Atlantic, two streets down, and then it's Peninsula, and in there there's a bunch of marshland. Mm-hmm. And fuck, man, I remember one time there's a. Uh, what are they called? A, 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 a reservoir that, that takes uh, in backwater. And there was like a seven foot gator in that fucker that just it, it moseyed in there. Yeah. If you I'm go. Sitting in the back. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you go out late at night and you go out on your buddy's boats and you fucking put the, like that spotlight on the, uh, the gimmick. You'll see him above. Cruising right. above the surface yeah, is one attacking you right now. You seem to be fighting off an alligator of some or something. No, I, I moved this. Um, I moved my table, and it's fucking. Well, how far? I mean, it's right there. You move it to another huh? county. It's no, but I moved it far enough to, for it to. Uh, I, I I moved it far enough. I moved it far enough to, uh, it keeps pulling at this. That's maybe why I didn't have my. Uh, the power? Well, no, I didn't have my uh, proper camera tonight. I like this one better, maybe. I don't know. I have to think about it. But anyway, so I'm sitting in the back let's, one let, time. Let's ask some people. Do, we, do, do, do the people like Yes, this? let us know in the comments. Do you like the close-up of Kevin or do you like the a little more distant where you get the full um, Luxembourg painting behind him? Um, I'm sitting on the lanai. I'm sitting in she the back. She doesn't follow me anymore. You told me. What happened? Yeah, Did she, you? she got hot, she, I, she, I guess. Does she work for WWE? What What happened? <laughs> yeah, she I, I did, you, did you get magooed by the no, painter? I mistakenly told her that I fucking headlined a WrestleMania. She fucking looked in the archives. She said, no, you didn't. You no, lying, you didn't. motherfucker. Fucking liar. That was Lawrence Taylor. That was Lawrence Taylor and the, uh, the oh, Bam Bam. You, you stupid fucking audio jepperoni. I got, oh. ah, can't believe it. All right, Kevin, Rick, Kevin Rick. Nash never fucking. How is he in the Hall of Fame two times? Never one, t- one time be a fucking main event at WrestleMania. I can't believe it. We need more. There sh- oh, there she is. There she is. Still producing art. She needs something. All right, someone's got to take her out for a steak. I don't know. Someone's. Well, those are, those are a little bit of those pictures. She's striking, is she not? Yeah. I just like her artwork. Right. Of course, I just obviously. Love, obviously. I just, if you go, they, like, they pull up, like, close, like, like the close-up. That's exactly Let's see some of that artwork you just had up right there. Like, like go back to where they're going like, to, yeah, see, that's just, I mean, and you just, uh, you, when you look at it, you can just see the stroke. I mean, it just, it's ch- it's chill, and she, she fucking throws a lot of fucking work out. Mm-hmm. I, don't th- I don't think that mine took, you know, probably more than a couple of days to, to create. Kind of has like a, uh, in, in a very rudimentary way, like a Jackson Pollock kind of a feel to it. A little smoother than Pollock. Yeah. Uh, not as chaotic and, and not as insane. layered. You know. Yeah. Not as you know. But this I mean, looks. This looks like this. I would call lava lamp smash. Would be like the style. I would call this. Like there's a smoothness, but but a disruption. Definitely a disruption. I'd call this rectal bleeding. That was a, like Wade Boggs had when I walked into the locker room. 
Mm. All right, uh, Rick H., I remember being at spring break in Panama City and suddenly seeing you jump off the stage and chase a guy across the beach for throwing a rock at you. And Scott, what's your policy on unruly fans? By the way, never seen someone your size move that fast. Um, yeah, I'm like that fucking, I'm, I'm like that lion that the fucking hyenas fuck with and all of a sudden the next thing you know there's dead, like nine dead hyenas. They're like, why? I had no idea he could move that fast. How many times um, have you had to take had have you had to take your hand to a fan? I didn't do that. I I, all I, did, I held that guy down, spun him around. When I looked how small and how it, it was like, I will not strike somebody that doesn't oppose. Like, if I don't think you can do me any bodily harm, I will not strike you. Mm -hmm. I might grab you by your throat and hold you down. I might choke the life out of you for a second. But so how many times has that happened? I don't know. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> no, I'm honestly asking. I, working as a heel, you know, you're subject to unruly fans at times who cross the line. You, you, you can't just stand there and, and take a shot from somebody. You got to do something, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I, there was, I, mean, I remember we were in Grand Rapids, I think it was, and some guy reached across and punched me right in the face. And I just right. Turned, I just turned around and hit him with an elbow right above, right, right above his eye and sp I mean, split him to his skull. And he just stood there and blood was fucking pumping out of his head. And it, he fell back and, you know, the cops came over. And it, thank God Dallas used, to, um, Dallas used to tape all of his matches. And he had a, a, a little camera in the, in the walkway. And oh, so you could prove if you had to that you were hit yeah, first. Yeah. And, and, well, we, mm. sh we, we proved it. So not only did the guy get busted open, but the Grand Rapids Police Department put, him put in the cuffs, cuffs on him. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, Kev, what more can we say? You have a big weekend ahead. I don't want to keep you one second longer. I know you're itching to get out to California. Do you know how many times today that I've contemplated fucking staying at home? Well, seriously, not including the last three during this thought pattern <laughs> since I brought up WrestleMania 11, well, that, that would be 20. Um, now you'll go out there because you have a, uh, an opportunity to see, uh, you'll see, uh, you'll see, uh, Waltman, right? X-Pac will be out there. I'll see Sean the next weekend though, if, if not, so. I, I want to see. I want to see. I, I, I want to see my friend Adam. Okay, Adam. Good. So you're going to see Adam. So that's a reason to he's go. He's picking me up at the airport tomorrow. And I heard that um, that Delta uh, has advance notice that they need to ensure that your flight is smooth. So they have a, a twin to, to, a twin propeller jet. To uh, tell you to tell you how different things are when you used to fucking blast Delta on Twitter. You would always get a a, a, a uh, DM from their from their customer service department. And this time, nothing. They I'm don't good. give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. Look at their stock price. <laughs> you wonder why. So why don't you switch airlines? Why 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 this uh, allegiance to Delta? I know you have all your miles there, probably. No, but it's. Air, air travel on a whole is a fucking rotten, horrible blowjob. Right. But you got to find the one that gives you the Delta, least teeth. And I think United would give you the least oh, teeth. I, but it's not an option. Oh, out of, out of Daytona? At Daytona Beach, I have American and Delta. Oh. United sucks cock. They would, I mean, I, would, I, I hate United. I sat and listened. So this is my whole thing. It's just that everybody's a, such a fucking liar. You know, I'm just so tired. Of, guess what, man? There's, there's some of us gray-haired fuckers that are sitting there in, in, in the at the gate, listen to your bullshit. They've been fucking flying since we've been 17 years old. You're not getting anything biased. We're just fucking, and you think you've gotten us beat down, you think we're not going to say anything? Guess what? 
Ask the motherfuckers that were at gate 36 in fucking Atlanta at, at, at B36. Ask them fucking if the big fucking guy didn't fucking just do a little stand up and just stay on it. And then the fucking, then we get on the plane and Porky Pig that was fucking the, the flight attendant fucking decides she's going to sit her fucking ass, fat fucking ass down and not to give any service. And then when I, the, the Polly comes on 20 minutes into the flight and says, you can move around now at this time. We got smooth sailing. She never gets up. She never takes off her seatbelt. She never even gives first class service. And I fucking ring my thing and I said, what the fuck? She says, well, there, I said, there, was, there was turbulence. I said, I was awake the whole time. There wasn't turbulence. I said, you were asleep. She said, well, it's at our discretion. I said, okay. She said, well, I can get you something to drink now. I said, no, I'm fine. So we landed, and she went, and as you leave, you know, you, you leave, you, you leave, and you take a left. She went into the galley and took a right and stood there, and I just fucking turned, and I went like this. Middle finger for anyone fuck, listening. Fuck, fuck you. I, just, I didn't tell her fuck you. I just, I said, your service is number one, lady. I said, I don't need your name because I've got the flight number. And bitch, you're up front in a jump seat. And I, I, I will fucking definitely be, don't worry. You, you will not go unscathed, you fucking cunt. You're going to have a better flight. Couldn't be three in a row. You know what? Couldn't be three in a row. But as I sit here, I was like, why? What, what, it's... Why? Why am I gonna? Why am I even pulling my cock out, knowing that the fucking chances of, of getting a bad blowjob are so fucking great? There's that why, analogy. Why am I not just, There's that analogy. Again. Why am I not just staying the fuck at home? Because it doesn't. It. Because it doesn't mean that it won't be a uh, an enjoyable time. You can, you'll you'll get out there. You're gonna see friends. You're gonna work a convention. You're making a living, and I'll miss the fucking. I'll I'll, I'll miss one of the fucking uh, ball games. Yes, you right. Well, you can keep your gimmick on can't on the table. Can't do that. Lady. Can't do that and sign autographs. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going. See, now I feel guilty that that by bringing up WrestleMania, I've convinced you not to go, and by bringing up your Delta flight from last week, that I, that we have in some way this show has robbed the fans in Los Angeles of seeing you. So I need to undo that with the remaining time here. What, are we going to fucking do a Cornette show? Yeah. We're going five hours? <laughs> I'm on the clock. You think it's going to take me that long to convince you to get on a plane? All right, you know well, everybody, tune in next week yeah, to see what happened. Tune in next week and see if... Uh, Maybe I'll maybe I'll fucking uh, text Tony Khan and see if he'll fucking oh, put boy. me on, put me on a fucking uh, private so I can go to WrestleCon. Well, check you know your what? wrestling you news know, this week. This is the honest. This is the honest guy truth. Go ahead, Mike. Mike from from from, from WrestleCon. Um, from high spots, yes. I mean, from high spots. Yeah, yeah. It, Same his, thing. He's always been so good to me, and I would not fuck him. Of of anybody else. I just wouldn't fuck him. And I wouldn't fuck Gilbert, and I wouldn't fuck primetime appearances that I work for because I did make a commitment to those people. So to those people, I will be there. Well, there you go. We're back on track then. So there, that's Just like that. I, ha I have to be a man of my word because unless somehow fucking Dominion gets a hold of my fucking reservation... <laughs> And fucking deletes it. That could happen. <laughs> Boy, if this wasn't the most bipolar show uh, we've ever done. And I'm not stoned. That's See? the problem. That's the problem. I'm, I'm never doing. I'm never doing another. This is. I'm too fucking angry at the world right now. I'm still angry about the loss of my son and. 
If I don't fucking alter my se- myself to some degree, I just want fucking, <laughs> I'm a, like a fucking a serial killer. Just waiting for my next fucking, except, except I just want to just go off on a tangent on somebody. Can't wait to read the coverage of this episode in the press. Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Heat, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, Sean Oliver, producer Steve Kaufman, graphics Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023. And I hope to fucking God my fucking audio wasn't in and out this week. I think you sounded perfect this week. I usually ask you if you want to do another show, but Kev, do you want to go to California? No. Yeah.